Hey guys, Pastor Courtney here. Today I want you to know that God delights in you. Some of you guys might know me really well, but for those of you that don't, I have two precious children, Audra Joy, who is five and a half, very important, and White Eugene, who is three. And every night I carry those two hooligans into bed and I kiss their little faces and I pray over them. And yesterday, it was an admittedly long day for Wyatt Eugene. And there were many times we had to talk about making wise choices and the importance of treating others the way that you want to be treated. And simply put, he's three years old. <laughs> and I have the honor of teaching him how to love God and love people as a three-year-old and, of course, beyond. And it's the most wonderful, exhausting, stretching work that I can ever imagine. Well, as I carried him in my arms and looked into his precious sleeping face last night, I thought, I cannot get enough of this tiny person. No matter what happened during the day, no matter what messes were made, whether or not he listened well, my heart puffed up so full that it spilled right out of my eyes. I'm a crier. You guys probably know that from watching my devos. And in that moment, God whispered to my heart, I delight in you that way too. I delight in you. I can't get enough of you. No matter what happened today, no matter how many times you messed up, whether you listened perfectly or not, I delight in you. And I want you to know that he delights in you as well, friend. He says, you are precious to me. You are worthy of unfailing love. You are a joy. Your life has a firm purpose. Your creator only made one of you. The one who fashioned and formed your soul didn't want a world that was devoid of you. He said, a universe without you is not a good enough universe. It's incomplete. And you might hear me uh, speak that out today and immediately reject those words, thinking, no way, not me. God does not think about me that way. I don't deserve it. But I want you to know that these truths are part of God's original design according to scripture. These are unshakable truths about you. You were made to be loved. You were made to be delighted in, accepted, not rejected. And this is a truth that shouldn't go in one ear and out the other, as my grandma Ali used to say. The truth about what God thinks of you should be life-changing if you let it sink deep down into your heart and your mind today. The fact is, God wants a relationship with you in which you live and operate in the truth that God delights in you. And he made you to be so close to him that you don't doubt it for a second. He wants you to have confidence in the fact that he doesn't just love you, but get this, he likes you too. A few years ago, I wrote down this quote by Max Licato. He has so many good ones. And I tacked this one up in my office. It says, if God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. If he had a wallet, your photo would be in it. He sends you flowers every spring and a sunrise every morning. And whenever you want to talk, he'll listen. He can live anywhere in the universe and he chose your heart. Face it, friend, he's crazy about you. And I put that up where I can see it often because even though practically from birth, it was ingrained in my mind that God loves me, my heart often needs to be reminded that no matter what I do, he likes me too. And that when we come to God in our inadequacy and our shame, he doesn't shake his head and wag his finger. He lifts up our head and he invites us to remember how much joy he finds in us, no matter what. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you, Isaiah 62, 5. Psalms 18, 19 says, God rescued me because he delighted in me. So when I stumble, you know what? His delight in me does not waver. The absolute joy God takes from being with me is not clouded. It's not inhibited by who I'm not. Because he's more interested in the fact, get this, he's more interested in the fact that the blood of his son covers who I am. He's more interested in who I am covered by the blood of Jesus than who I'm not in my own sin and shame. When I came into his family from that moment on, you and I were covered by his robe of righteousness and he wrote our name down in his book of life. And as I was looking in his word today, even though it blows my mind to believe it, I see over and over that he does not simply tolerate us, friends. He delights in us. 
He's not ashamed of you. And he never hesitates to call you his own. It's amazing to think that God calls us his child, but even more than that, he calls us his friend. He looks into my imperfect, sinful, willful, stubborn heart, and he still puffs up with joy. And he declares that he can't get enough of me. And he can't get enough of you either. I love this poem by Ele Evelyn Sotrovsky. She writes, loved, not for great deeds and heights attained, not for accomplishments and fame, not for moments when I succeed, when I'm strong, when I believe, not for times when I'm pressing on, unfazed by night, fixed on the dawn, loved, for who I am now and today, stumbling, groping to find my way, hallelujah, a heart of dreams and fears and walls, of starts and stops, of peaks and falls, a life unpolished, unprofound, a sinner ransom, lost and found. That is the person, imperfect, sinful, willful, that God delights in, no strings attached, nothing that we could do to earn his love. He delights in us. And I hope today that that truth transforms your heart. That maybe you've heard it before, but let that sink in. That when God sees us, he doesn't see the imperfections or the sin or the not good enough or can't get it all done. He looks at our beautiful, precious face and says, I delight in you because I made you and you are mine. Dear Jesus, Transform us today with your love, God, with the knowledge of who you are and who you created us to be, God. I pray that we rem be reminded how mind-blowing it is to think of the fact that not only do you love us, but you like us too. You call us your friend. You can't get enough of spending time with us, God. I pray we would lean into that intimacy today, God, that we would draw close to you, Lord Jesus that it would be that delight which reminds our hearts that we don't have to be far from you because of our sin, but we can come back and receive the same acceptance and love that you always offer. I thank you today, God, not for who we're not, but for who you are and who you make us be because of your son Jesus and the blood he shed for us. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and see you soon.